Hi folks, uh, today we've got something a little bit uh, unusual and we're going to do this in, a, in sort of the opposite of the way we usually uh, do these videos, which is we're going to start with the lock disassembled and then I'm going to reassemble it uh, because really that's where the interesting features in this lock are because uh, this is a Corbin M heart. Corbin M heart cylinder, uh, and these were only on the market fairly briefly in the uh, 1970s and early 80s or so, uh, until they got sued off the market by Medeco, and now Corbin Ruswin uh, only uh, provides replacement parts and maintenance services for existing uh, systems. Uh, under the name uh, Corbin Ruswin High Security. Uh, they've removed the Emhart name since the Emhart Hardware Company sold off its stake in Corbin years ago. Um, but basically, it starts off as a standard, as a fairly standard six pin uh, Corbin cylinder. Uh, the only real difference being that it has this anti drill plate. Uh, up here in front of the chambers. Unlike Medeco, it only has the one anti-drill plate because Emhart does not use a sidebar. But uh, the reason why Medeco was able to successfully sue uh, Corbin to get these locks off the market is that they do actually share a certain commonality with Medeco's design. Work with me. If I could get the camera to focus. Come on, hopefully. Almost. Oh, you're so close. There we go. So hopefully you can see there those two cuts are at uh, angles. They're not straight across. They're not perpendicular to the blade. Uh, unlike Medeco, which uses three angles, uh, left, right, and center, Corbin, uh, Emhart, Corbin Emhart only used uh, two angles, left and right. There is no center. And I do have the other cuts on this key uh, covered up because this one uh, may actually be going into service. Uh, but here you can see the very distinctive uh, and unique Kibo design. Uh, here it says Corbin M. Hart. Uh, later versions will say Corbin Ruswin, or uh, just not say anything, or just have uh, system markings. But uh, anyway, the other important feature about the key for this is that opposite each cut, you'll notice there's this square notch, and that uh, corresponds to these grooves on the plug, which go all the way around. And all of that is because back to autofocus, is because of the way the pins are designed. Let's see if we can zoom in here. So these are the pins. So in the middle we have a fully assembled pin stack. So the pins have been locked together. So when I pick them up, they actually stay connected there. Because the uh, top pin, or the driver pin, has this little uh, protrusion on the end, and the key pin has a corresponding groove cut on the top, and if you notice it has these very tiny little overhangs there, and there's a very tiny little cutout on the driver pin. Uh, the master pin for these uh, has both a tab and a slot on it, so that it can fit between these two pins. And the uh, master pin also uh, 
is available in a way that uh, it can offset or change uh, the rotation of the pins necessary to get them to unlock so that uh, your master key and change key in one of these systems could actually have two different angles, unlike uh, Medico. So anyway, the way, and over here we have just a standard Schlage uh, nickel-plated key pin, or uh, that might actually be, well, I don't know, but uh, it's nickel, it's at least a nickel finish, and it's a standard Schlage key pin so that you can just compare this for size uh, and get an idea of the difference between the two. So, what we're going to do to assemble this lock is we're going to just slide those two pins together so the tab is in the groove. And let's zoom out. There we go. Let's see down there. First things first, we are going to slide the plug back into the lock and get it more or less in the locked position. Just get these screws started. Tighten them up real quick. You don't have to tighten these too much, uh, although if you are actually putting this into service, obviously you want to make sure that they are tight enough that they will not uh, just back out accidentally over time. So there we go. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pick up these pin stacks by the driver pin, making sure that they stay linked together. That's very important. If these pins become unlinked, uh, the lock will become jammed and stop working, and then you have to uh, drill things out. And you don't want to do that with a, a lock like this that is so hard to find and so very expensive to uh, get repair parts for. Come on. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, I'm just going to pick this up by the middle, so that they stay linked, and this one's going to go into the final chamber. We line up that uh, the plug so that that can sink all the way down, and then we're going to top it off with the spring. We'll do the same thing with this next pin stack. There we go. And I'm going to just go over here for a moment to drop the rest of these pins in. Oh, that's not good. One of the pin stacks became unlinked. Like I was just saying, that's a bad thing. What you do not want to have happen while the lock is actually in service. And sometimes, uh, when you're loading it, the driver pin will be a little bit off uh, and it will stick. And all you have to do is just give it a little tap, and it will then slide right in. Just let gravity do the work there. Get all the springs in. Get all loaded up nicely. There we go. And now, we uh, take a key that's not covered in uh, junk. We can slide it in here. There we go. And you'll 
you'll see all the springs have jumped up. That's fine for now. But now, about everything, uh, that crazy uh, keystone design and everything else turns nice and smoothly. So that, uh, my friends, is the Corbin M. Hart system. I'm going to go uh, pound the spring cap back onto this thing uh, so that I don't lose any parts because God knows that would be expensive. So until next time, everyone, have fun, stay safe, and happy picking.